a public hearing of the Zoning Commission on amendments to the zoning ordinance of the Village of Haynesville for medical cannabis facilities for the Haynesville Municipal Code Ordinance will now come to order at 7.04 p.m. on December 9th, 2014. We can please have a roll call. Mayor Linda Soto. Present. Trustees Deranowski. Here. Priest. Here. Duberstein. Here. Barrett. Here. And Daly. Here. Okay, we are in quorum. Can I have approval of tonight's agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call. Trustees Deranowski. Aye. Priest. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Barrett. Aye. And Daly. Aye. And at this time, I'd like to ask the village clerk to state how the hearing was posted. The public hearing notice was published on Saturday, November 22nd, and the public hearing sign has been placed in front of the village hall on Monday, December 1st. All requirements have been met. At this time, I'd like to turn the floor over to Jeremiah from Manhart Consulting, Rolf Campbell Associates. Oh, I apologize, but we need to do the oath. I'm moving on for uh, the public hearing. Jeremiah, just wait the wings in the okay. Are there any, is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak at this public hearing? No. There's not much you have to have. I know, I have to, yeah, I have to have the trustees, but I didn't know if anybody but, but if you think, even though you don't think you're going to say something, if you think there's a remote chance after you hear things you're going to want to make a comment, I recommend you take the oath along with us. So you can stand up and raise your right hand, trustees. Uh, anybody, anybody, anybody who's going to speak in the public hearing? You have to get the oath. Please, okay. Um, I do swear and affirm. To testify truthfully before the village board, to testify truthfully before the village board of the village of Hainesville, of the village of Hainesville, during the public hearing, during the public hearing for the zoning ordinance, for the zoning ordinance for medical cannabis, for medical cannabis facilities for facilities for the Hainesville Municipal Hall, the Hainesville Municipal Hall. Jeremiah, our planner, the floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, what's before you tonight is an amendment to, to your zoning ordinance to uh, accommodate uh, specific rules for medical cannabis facilities in your village. Uh, back in January, the state legislature put into effect uh, medical cannabis for the state of Illinois. What that means is that it's established a system for growing and distributing uh, pharmaceutical grade cannabis. Uh, to citizens in Illinois who qualify for certain medical conditions with prescriptions. Um, this breaks up facilities into two groups. One's a cultivation center where the medical cannabis will be grown, and then dispensaries where the cannabis will be distributed to patients, uh, basically like a pharmacy, but only dealing in medical cannabis uh, products and those uh, pharmaceutical grade. Um, per the state legislature and the state act, they allow you to set reasonable zoning standards for these facilities. They also impose certain standards on them at the state level. For the cultivation center, as may have been reviewed with you, there are certain setbacks set in the state, set in the state statute that stipulate they have to be 2,500 feet from any property zone for residential use, or school, or child daycare facility. This means that at this time, 2,500 feet is about half a mile. There's no place in your village where a medical cannabis facility could be located per the state standards. With respect to dispensaries, they did set certain stipulations in the ordinance that state that they can't be within a thousand feet of a child daycare facility or a school, and they can't locate it in any residential zoning properties. Um, in addition to that, they allow you to set reasonable standards of your own with respect to um, medical cannabis facilities, dispensaries, cultivation centers, which is what the ordinance has before you tonight. Um, by and large, what you see is um, a work of the product of the Lake County Task Force on Medical Cannabis Facilities. The project that are a number of communities in the area to um, look at the specific rules and how to address them uniquely in each community. Um, with respect to um, the actual zoning process, you must approve a cannabis facility at your local level before it can go to a state level for licensing. 
The licensing of requirements of the state level just went into effect uh, this summer, and they're rather extensive. But before they can even approach the state level for a license, they have to go through and get some approval for it through you. So with that all said, um, the village is presently looking at making in this ordinance medical cannabis facilities a special use in the ORD district, which is your office research and development district. It's your most intensive district in the village. The only location that they're looking at presently is this area between Route 20, the train tracks, and um, the village boundary. On this map is blue, is where all the potential um, non-residential districts are. Um, with respect to that, there are lines on here that show the setbacks for schools and um, child care facilities that are known, as well as special conditions that you are potentially considering tonight with respect to setbacks from um, village-owned properties, uh, parks, churches, and um, substance abuse treatment facilities, and places of worship and things of that nature. That would be an additional thousand feet setback. So when we looked at the map and we did the analysis, the only area that was outside that thousand feet was your property in your ORT district here in that triangle area. It's approximately 27, 26 acres. So it's fairly substantial. It is your most intensive district. It allows for things such as manufacturing, automobile service, office, uh, scientific reaches, and all those things. It does have access to a major highway, which is good for this type of use since it's a regional facility. Right now, the state is only going to allow about 60 in the state for dispensaries. And in Lake County, there's only going to be three dispensaries this go around for state statute, uh, for the state rules. And so they will need a regional draw for a population of about 200,000 people in the service area. Not all 200,000 people will have a card <coughs> for medical cannabis, but that would be the draw area that you broke out on a per capita base for the whole state. So those are the spatial requirements that are in your ordinance right now, suggesting on where it potentially could be located. Just to reiterate, they allow you to set reasonable rules for the zoning. They do not allow you to prohibit these facilities. It specifically states that in the act, and if you try to prohibit them in any way, they can come in and do things at the state level that you know could force a facility in here. Um, but that's more of a legal issue. I let the lawyer cover the actual technicalities of that. Um, in addition to all um, those setback requirements, there are another other standards in here for the submittal for the special use. Namely, your ordinance specifically calls out that every document that would go to the state for the licensing of a dispensary would first come to you as part of the condition use process. So that includes architecture, uh, lighting, parking, traffic impact, land use studies, all those things you normally see as much use, but even at a higher level, because the, the state requirements are rather substantial on, on, on locating these facilities. Um, with respect to parking, um, since these are kind of a monopoly facility, what the state's running with them. Only 86 licenses, only three for the county. The parking requirements aren't quite clear on what the demand's going to be. Uh, the, there's a set number of at least 100, but what will really happen is the applicant will need to prove to you what the demand is. So they'd have to provide a traffic study that shows this is how many clients we're expecting for the facility. Here are the demands that we're going to um, provide for parking for these hours of operation. In addition to that, there are certain requirements in for landscaping, building materials, um, the fact that it can only be located on a lot for a single use, so this facility cannot be located in multi-use uh, commercial shopping centers or something of that nature. Uh, there are certain signage requirements, namely displaying that this facility can only be accessed by people that are either employees or 18 years old or card holders. There's also a stipulation that any signage can only stipulate that it's a cannabis or marijuana, specifically medical terms, not you know cartoonizing it. A number of states run into the fact that you know people want to advertise you know things that you've seen at Spencer's gifts or something like that. And so this is this more way this ordinance is to really keep it towards that medical um, um, use that it's intended to be. The hours of operation that are proposed in here are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The state's current rules say from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you are narrowing that down just a little bit more, but reasonable with respect to your, uh, your village standards. No drive-through facilities. Um, Finally, there's security and video surveillance requirements. Um, at the state level, these will be monitored and controlled by the state police, but also at the local level, your ordinance calls for them to work with your local law enforcement to go through the safety plan as well as provide you know, safety updates. And the state rules that says the emergency response for any of these facilities will be provided by the local police force first. So coordination is, is very key in this, these instances to make sure that safety is maintained on site. 
Um, there's stipulations with respect to surveillance equipment, um, some monitoring equipment that has to go back to the state at all times. It's, it's rather expensive, but we want to make sure that it's coordinated also at the local level. And finally, there's you know things in here for you know, conduct on site, no loitering, um, no other uses on site other than actually going and getting your medical cannabis. Um, with that said, that pretty much sums up the total ordinance on what it covers. Um, if there's any legal questions, I would, I would refer to the village council on that. If you have any other questions on this, um, we've done these for a number of our communities already. Um, none of the communities that I've worked in yet has received uh, a license application. I do know of one in the county that has received an application for a cultivation center up in Zion, and I, I don't know where they're at right now. But the first round of applications have already gone through at the state level uh, in October, so there'll be another round probably in the next October uh, for just those facilities that don't be signed. Okay, are there any questions at this time for Jeremiah or Jim Ryan? Quick question. If I understand you correctly, it's the only area that, with this ordinance that is available for this dispensary, is the powder blue lower left triangle. Area. Yes, it's a triangle that's uh, bound on the south by Route 20, on the north basically by the train tracks, and on the west by the village boundary. Okay, thank you. And our attorney, Jim Rack, has a couple of comments that he would like to add. Mayor Snow, uh, just a few items. Uh, first, as Jeremiah mentioned, the, the uh, ordinance establishing the zoning regulations has to be reasonable. Uh, we don't have the authority to prohibit uh, dispensaries. That's that's uh, that's unreasonable in the state's eyes. In this case, um, the setbacks, as Jeremiah, Jeremiah described, to leave us with that one 26 or 27 acre parcel uh, that could be for a dispensary, uh, and you have before you an ordinance that uh, that includes all of the items that were just described. And just a couple of comments on that ordinance. Um, normally, when we provide you an ordinance that is uh, amending any part of the code, we give you an ordinance that stripes out the, the parts of the code that we're, we're deleting and that adds a new language with underlining. Everything in this is new. So the, all the language that's there is brand new. There's nothing in our code that currently addresses medical marijuana because it didn't exist prior to the enactment of the, of the statute. <coughs> so that's, that's all new. In terms of the process, the, the plan here would be uh, after tonight uh, and any discussion we have to, uh, prior to the January board meeting, hold a meeting of the zoning board to uh, establish findings of fact and develop a recommendation to the board and then have on the, on the agenda at the board meeting in, in January, the ordinance for um, consideration and approval. Any questions, thoughts, suggestions? No questions or comments from the board? Is there anybody from the public that wanted to address the board at this time? This time, I'll ask for motion for adjournment of the public hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call. Trustees Dernowski. Aye. Freeze. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Barrett. Aye. And Daly. Aye. Okay, at this time, we're going to move into the regular scheduled board meeting. December 9th, 2014, at 7.17 p.m. And if everybody would please rise, I will lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
and did we have any takers for public comments for the regular board meeting? Okay, quiet group tonight. Omnibus vote agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call. Yeah. John, Kevin, roll call. Trustees Janowski, Aye. Priest, Aye. Duberstein, Aye. Barrett, Aye. and David. Aye. Okay, at this time, before we move on with the regular board meeting, uh, in early October, I made an uh, announcement in post uh, asking for letters of interest from residents for appointment to the remainder of Trustee Walkington's term, which will expire the end of April 2015. And uh, surprisingly, I got a total of nine letters of interest. Uh, which is great. I'm glad that we have residents that want to be involved. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised because we have a hard time getting half that number to show up at regular board meetings. So it was a nice surprise. And uh, I commend everybody for stepping forward and taking interest in the village. Uh, I do have to tell you that there was a, a particular couple of letters of interest and it was a hard choice. Um, but uh, I'm very pleased uh, with this appointment. She has resided in the village for uh, uh, just a little over 18 years. Uh, she lives in Misty Hill, and her and her husband have raised two sons here. And uh, you may be familiar with her son because we welcomed him home from Afghanistan uh, just about a year ago, uh, right on Christmas Eve. So, uh, and he is here tonight. Um, also, she offers quite an extensive background in uh, management skills, uh, budgeting and accounting. Uh, she's been involved in various areas of the community and the schools, so at this time I'd like to ask Dina Hine to step forward and the clerk and I will swear you in.
Okay, we're going to move on to reports and communications, and we're going to start with our village engineer, Greg Lewin. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, a couple items today. First off is the uh, completed Cranberry Lake Road Resurfacing Project. Uh, we have only received one invoice, a pay request from Peter Baker, and that was paid last month. Uh, they, for whatever reason, are a little bit busy and didn't get us a uh, pay request uh, this month. I did tell them that. We expect this, we want to wrap it up this year, so we want to get that, uh, done, have them get that to us by mid-December for the uh, bills payable in January. Uh, we did include a summary of what we anticipate the final cost to be. Uh, basically, we were just slightly under budget on all of the uh, categories for the Cranberry Lake resurfacing, which is the MFT project, and also for the LISC tail, uh, the, the LISC, White Tail, and Hunter's Way of road patching. Uh, we also finished or, the uh, application for reimbursement for the CDBG grant, so that paperwork went over to the county. Uh, we should get the reimbursement of $85,000, and we expect to get that money in 90 days or so. For Washington Street, the Lake County DOT improvements, uh, that project was actually let out, and Burger Excavating was awarded the contract for the underpass and railroad tracks. Uh, they're starting utility work already, and it's expected to get moving basically the winter of 2015, and it's a two-year project. So expect that to get completed basically fall 2016. <coughs> uh, then we also have started our next five-year uh, roadway planning period, and we just did uh, some preliminary rough estimates uh, based on the work that we just completed with the Cranberry Lake. Uh, the village has invested uh, roughly $670,000 in the Misty Hill project and then the Cranberry Lake road resurfacing project. If we were going to finish the rest of the town in a manner similar to what we've done those two subdivisions, uh, we're looking at roughly a million dollars in today's dollars in that work. Uh, total project. Total project. Now that's preliminary estimates. We got to go ahead and actually do some uh, more detailed measurements of the uh, factor of maybe some inflation costs and things of that nature. Uh, currently, our MFT balance uh, is one hundred thirty thousand dollars, and we get roughly seven thousand dollars a month, so we're roughly about eighty-four thousand dollars a year in MFT funds. So, some quick math is that the MFT funds are not going to be sufficient to. Finish the rest of the They never are. <laughs> so, we'll get some more detailed information to you uh, probably by the end of the year when we finish our report, take our measurements, and, and uh, do some more detailed cost estimating. Uh, estimating but uh, that's just an order of magnitude to just get uh, you guys a feel for what's ahead of us. Now, you're not talking about a million dollars over five years. No, no, but you know, some of the roads are shed. Yeah, they need of work. The main difference is those roads are with the crowning method like we've done. Correct, correct. There's a, probably a little bit better shape than what uh, Cranberry Lake was at. Uh, but still, there's a lot of cracking. Uh, <coughs> more, more roads that need work than more roads that don't need work. Well, let's hope it's a mild winter. <laughs> yes. Good thing it's budget time, huh? Any other questions or comments for Greg? Okay, we'll move on to our attorney, Jim Rock. Thank you, Mayor Soto. Uh, something we worked uh, with Village <coughs> Manor Al Bain to develop the medical cannabis ordinance that uh, was discussed during the public hearing. Also, uh, worked with Mayor Soto and Clerk Metzler to develop a uh, letter that will be going to all of the residents who are impacted by the change of address ordinance that was adopted in November and also a form uh, that they'll be requested to submit to the village requesting the stipend that was authorized by that ordinance. 
And then also, um, we worked with uh, Clerk Metzler and Mayor Soto on a zoning matter for a property on Route 120 that is uh, scheduled to be uh, zoned commercial, but is currently a residential property and somebody who had an interest in, in operating a business at that location. Okay, thank you, Jim. Thank you. We'll move on to our public works superintendent, Jeff Gately. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to talk about water a little bit. Uh, we did receive uh, salt, and we did have a little bit of an issue uh, during the receiving portion of it. Uh, I had called in for two loads of salt uh, while I was on the East Coast on vacation, uh, just because we had an appendix storm that was supposed to come in. And I ended up getting a call on Friday from Dave Schultz saying that we had about uh, 15 piles of salt uh, over at the Avon Township Yard. So long story short, they sent us our whole year's allotment in one shipment. So we have about 317 tons that were delivered in a bin that'll hold about 150. So uh, with some strategic uh, bulldozers of work, we were able to get everything in. Uh, some of it is in Avon's uh, shed and in their bins. We have everything accounted for. Uh, thank goodness they were able to let us do that. Otherwise, we'd probably have it inside the building over here. So um, we've got plenty of salt. You need salt, of course. Need salt. <laughs> <laughs> need salt. Of course. Um, on that note, just the heads up because we just received the bill for the said salt that just got approved. So. When you see for compass materials, a bill of 22,000 and change, that's what that's for. We have our whole year's allotment. What was your explanation for delivering it all at once? Um, there were a couple of things. This year, we ended up buying through the county exchange as opposed to buying it through the state. If you signed up before a certain date, I believe it was November 1st, of which we signed up in July, you got the cheaper price of $68 a ton versus 110. Somewhere within that contract, in order to get that price, you had to take the whole lot at once. So it happened to us, it happened to a few other municipalities that it was just one of those things in the fine print. Well that and salt supply in the Midwest has been rather erratic because I'm dealing with some transportation headaches right now through my customers. So yeah, I mean, um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We have they're, they're rationing the, the yeah. big salt the city letting to Michigan is not rationing it because of all the all the snow that they've had in upstate New York. So they're just kind of you know piecemealing it out. You, you know, my customer can't come in and buy this you know 350 truckloads of salt that he wanted. They're giving it to you know 25 and 30 at a time. See how the winter goes. We can cut a deal. <laughs> yeah, I assume we're still going to use the beet juice. Yes, bottle. yes, that has been delivered. That's actually in the shop as we speak. Um, fortunately, it reduces the amount of salt we have to use. So, uh, depending on how the winter goes next year, maybe we don't have to order any salt. Maybe we don't have to order any salt. <laughs> 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 Knock on the wood, we'll see what happens. Hey, we should just find the municipalities that are desperate when they run out. Well, I was just going to say, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we $200 a ton? <laughs> So, yeah, we're good on that. Um, you know, we are getting ready for winter. I did have uh, all of the highway flags uh, installed throughout the subdivisions, so I was looking for that. We did, um, we were having some issues up in the front of the village hall with some air coming in, so we finally were able to pull the mulling off and put some spray insulation underneath. I like to ask the ladies to see if it's helping, you know, to keep that cold air out of there. Uh, we'll know the next cold spell. Yeah, we can wait. Think so. We can wait for the next cold spell. Um, and then one other uh, thing, I did meet um, with Georgiana and Dave Coulter uh, to talk about wetlands since we're in budget mode right now, um, just to kind of combine wetlands, public works, figure out where we might have had overlaps, uh, try to define areas that needed to be done, and how you know which line item, you know how we're going to break everything down so we have a better of uh, the work to be done and uh, how it's going to be handled. Yeah, that's all I have to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, next up is our police chief, Phil Perlini. Um, not a lot. Uh, relatively, I wouldn't say it was a slow month, but I was 
to say it was a uh, non-crazy month, which is good. Slow is good. <laughs> yes, it is. Slow is always good. Um, just want to remind everybody, Shop in the Cap is uh, Saturday at 7.30 in the morning. We're going to get started so bright and early. And um, that's about it. Do you need the building open at 7 or at 7.30? Uh, maybe 7, 7, 7.15 would be okay. good. And yeah. uh, we can go from there. We, we expect that the officers will be here by 7.30. Okay. I think the kids will be arriving by 8. Okay. Okay. So, and we have everything else, so we use the building open. So even Thanksgiving was kind of quiet, which was really crazy going on, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> that's a few I said we did, but none okay. here. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right, there was Treasurer, Kenny Hensley. Um, as Jeff has mentioned, we're full fledged in the budget. Um, please send your worksheets back to me Friday, January 9th, so we can compile a tentative budget preliminary and look it over and tweak it and see where we're at. Um, my other items that I've been working on are under business with the SSA lobby and the regular village real estate tax lobby. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. Village clerk, Kathy Nessler. Okay. Um, I've been working under, bus under business item ordinance, um, working on establishing our meeting dates for the regular board meeting as well as the committee meeting dates for 2015. Um, the final certified letters for the duplicate addresses will be mailed tomorrow, which tells them their new address and has a form that they have to fill out and have notarized and returned by January 30th to receive their stipend, which will be mailed out the week of February 2nd. The address effective date is February 1st, Post Office, the Lake County Clerk's Office, and the Fire Departments have all been notified and certified letter by Mayor Soto. Um, starting Monday, December 15th at 9 a.m. is the first day to file your election packet, petition packet. And Monday, December 22nd at 5 o'clock is the last time to turn it in. Uh, nine courtesy packets have been picked up and we'll see when we turn it in. That's all I have. Oh, I do have, we have had um, numerous business inquiries and uh, looking into a couple to see what will happen with them also. Very good. All right, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Uh, I'll be brief tonight since we're moving into holiday mode. I do want to wish everyone Residents, business owners, all the officials and staff are very happy and joyous holiday season. That's the politically correct statement. To that, I will add the politically incorrect statement that includes Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Peace, Shalom, Happy Kwanzaa, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. God bless us all. Um, as everyone has mentioned, we're working very hard on the budget for the upcoming year. So I actually have been doing a lot of research and meeting with the officials and staff to talk about uh, various areas. One of the areas that I really want the board to be prepared for, and I think we even have to make it more of a standard line item in our budget. Um, you know, we, we talk about the wetlands and the woodlands and part of its beautification, some of its restoration, and some of its public works because a lot of our wetlands are man-made ponds or manipulated wetlands for stormwater protection. So there is a working function that they serve. We don't have flooding in Hainesville. Um, and with the last two summers that we've had, they've been very unusual. If you recall this spring, we had a very wet spring. We never really had a hot summer. A lot of these wetlands never dried out as they typically do. And uh, I, I have never seen some of these wetlands in the time since we built our home with some of the uh, uh, plant life as high as it is over my head. It's wetlands on steroids is what I call it. And where I'm going with this, for the purpose of some of these wetlands, particularly that are in Deer Point, Misty Hill, where we haven't been as aggressive with native restoration, now it's a matter of we need to get in there, clear out some of this vegetation, 
and are going to have to do bur controlled burns, such as the builder did in the beginning, or the inlets and outlets aren't going to work properly. And so really, um, that occurs if we attack that, that's going to address it for some time, but it should be a standing line item in the budget, so we don't have to wait till it gets out of control again. So that was just one of the most interesting things that uh, I had discussion with Greg Bruin about, um, as well as um, Jeff and Georgianne, and then also with Dave Coulter. And where that really became noticeable is during the uh, construction of Antler Park over by that particular wetland that's adjacent to there. So with that, let's move on to our standing committees. Uh, first up is finance, Trustee Daly. When we move into budget mode, as we have, I move into cheap mode. Uh, Ebenezer. Yes. <laughs> and I reminded the finance committee uh, tonight when we met that for the last couple of years, when we put the budget together, we have taken a look at the revenue and the request of expenditures. And last year, particularly, somewhat the year before, we took money from our savings account to make the budget balance, which was planned and not a problem. We had a fair amount of money in the savings. We are approaching, and I'm not going to say it's going to happen this year, but within the next couple of years, the point where we will not be taking money out of savings because we'll have spent it down to a reasonable amount. We always want to keep some there for emergencies and other government failures or whatever. Um, so that can only lead to tighter budgeting on our part. Uh, I won't know how it will look this year until we get all the requests in and Kelly gets revenue investment together and we get to sit down and knock heads over it. But it's in our future. We're doing finance, we're doing well financially, but we need to uh, stand top of it. And that's all I have. Okay, understood. Public Works, Trustee Priest. <coughs> uh, have some of the shoes to fill here since Gary is retired. Uh, but uh, tomorrow's going to be the, the Public Works meeting at 6 30 here at Village Hall. Residents and everyone are welcome. Uh, talk to Jeff a little bit and what was going on. Uh, and tomorrow we will also be discussing a little bit of the budget uh, that's going to go on. And um, last meeting he informed us that he's got everything all ship shape ready to go for, for the snow. And now we've got the salt delivered, you've got the blobs on everything else. So everyone's great lips let the snow. You know? And that, that's about it. <laughs> and we're going to throw it back right down at Trust yeah. the Priest for public safety. Okay, public <laughs> safety. Uh, well, we didn't have a meeting uh, last month, but uh, we're still waiting for the response back from uh, Lake County on the Hainesville Road issue that we have for safety. Uh, thank you guys for sitting on Mayor and the police chief sent letters to the, with our concerns, and, uh, and that's about it. Yeah, we just, uh, all I got was uh, confirmation from Paul and Trick that it is on our radar to do additional work. Um, Pat Carey is aware of the situation, and uh, uh, I have not sat down with her, uh, with also her, um, Jeff Warfel has been elected as her replacement, so I talked about meeting with both of them on this issue. So we hope to do that right in the new year. We'll move on to wetlands, open spaces, and the Great Age Club. Trustee Duperstein. Yes, well, as has been mentioned, we've been busy planning for not only next year, but we're trying to work on a five-year plan. Um, and as happened with Cranberry Lake, the first year is the most intense, and then um, the effort uh, gets better and less expensive in the out years. So that's something that we're working on, not only for this budget, but for a long range. Um, on the Great Age Club, we had our holiday party, um, a luncheon today at Stevens Restaurant, and then dessert back at our house. Had a good time. Wonderful. Okay, we'll go back to broadcast media manager, Trustee Garanowski. Uh, well, again, budget things. I'm doing some exciting stuff in the budget for next year. Hopefully, we are able to afford it. Um, if Jerry will let it get through. <laughs> and um, as far as the website, uh, the YouTube channel for the last, last 28 days, 
we have had 11 views, 22 minutes on average are watching, and given that it was the holidays and everything, Thanksgiving, it's, it's lower, but it's kind of right about where I would expect it to be just because people were busy doing other things. So I expect this next month is going to be really, really uh, low, but uh, it'll pick up again and probably get more February. Thank you. Transportation, Trustee Barrett. Well, great time to stole my thunder about Washington after we get ready to start to kick off. Uh, Rollins Road is just kind of a standstill because of the winter construction season, so we're not going to see a whole lot of activity there. Uh, just got a salt. Uh, I guess people are just going to have to relearn how to drive you know, once the snow starts flying. Hopefully, there won't be too much paper for cheaper than these cars to be filling up. Let's hope that. Let's hope that. Okay, we're going to move on to our business items. First item up is an ordinance adopting the annual tax levy for Cranberry Lake Special Service Area Number One of the Village of Gainesville. So, second. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustees Dierenowski. Aye. Priest. Aye. Uberstein. Aye. Barrett. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Hein. Aye. Motion carried. Ordinance number 14-12-197. Next item is a tax levy ordinance for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2014. Shouldn't it be? Oh no, you're right, you're right, this always throws me. I'm thinking budget, okay. And ending April 30th, 2015. Do I have a motion? So. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustees Dierenowski? Aye. Priest? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Hein? Aye. Motion carried. Ordinance number 14-12-198. And our final business item is an ordinance establishing regular meeting dates and standing committee meeting dates for 2015. Second. Roll call. Trustees Dierenowski? Aye. Priest? Aye. Duberstein? Aye. Barrett? Aye. Daly? Aye. And Hein? Aye. Motion carried. Ordinance number 14-12-199. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 745. Woo!